my friends. Today, I want to share with you five things that you can stop doing today to simplify your life. And I think everyone will be able to relate to this to some extent because most people do these things sometimes, including me. And simplifying my life has given me so much more space and time and energy to enjoy my life so much more. So I'm really excited to share these with you today in the hopes that they can be just as valuable for you as they have been for me. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, this is a place where you can get tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. And if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do so down below to follow along whenever I post a new video. Please excuse the sweating, it's really hot here today, I'm sorry. As people, I think we have this tendency to sometimes overcomplicate things, overthinking, always doubting our choices, basically making things more difficult and more complicated than they need to be. Of course, life isn't always simple and easy. Sometimes it does throw us curveballs or things happen that we really don't want to happen and that really suck. And we just have to deal with it. So it's not always as easy as just saying, just simplify your life and everything will be easy and breezy. It doesn't work like that. Life does get messy every now and then. But there's another side to this as well. And I often get questions from people about how I am doing things. Like, can you please share your productivity system? Can you share your capsule wardrobe system? Like how many items do you have for each category? Can you share your budgeting system or your house chores? system or what kind of exercising is the best to stay healthy and lose weight all those kinds of questions and these questions used to throw me for a loop a little bit because i never felt like i had a good enough answer to them and my systems and routines and solutions are not fancy at all and they didn't feel that well thought out to me. I was seeing all of these other people doing all of these amazing things and they had all these great systems and step-by-step -step plans and fancy apps or software. And in comparison, I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. It felt like I was just winging it. So all I could do was basically reply, uh, I don't know, I just do this. Until I came across the term complexity bias. And that is when everything fell into place for me. And it suddenly became clear why I preferred just winging it over all of these fancy, well thought out 20 step programs that were actually quite complicated that I saw other people do. Complexity bias means that we tend to believe that complicated explanations and solutions are better than simple ones. So basically, as long as it looks and sounds complicated, it must be good. And we tend to think that simple solutions don't really work as well and we favor the more complicated sounding ones. Like Confucius so famously said, life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. So a really complicated sounding productivity system must be better than simply doing the most important task first. A complex diet with a hundred rules about foods to eat or to avoid must be better than just focusing on eating more plants, less junk food and moving our body more. We contemplate whether a spinning class is better than a hit class or bullet journals are better than online planners. Whether we should drink less coffee, more coffee, do cold showers, businesses will also choose a complicated sounding plan over a simple sounding one because it must be better. The downside of this is that complicated systems and solutions are very hard to, first of all, start doing. We might procrastinate because they seem too intense. And then when we do do them, they are harder to maintain and keep up long term. So we go from one complex idea to another thinking that this one will definitely change things, but they never really do. This is why I prefer simple actions and simple solutions and why I never used any fancy plans or schedules or step-by-step -step programs or rules about only having 33 items in your wardrobe or very specific exercising plans or any of that stuff. If you can come up with a simple solution that works with your natural inclinations instead of against them, then it'll oftentimes work the best, especially long term. And how I like to do that, that is where number two of this list comes into play. Or action over research. Now, I talk a lot about intentional living on this channel, doing the things that matter to you, thinking about ways that you can improve your life, your health, your happiness, and then doing those things with intention. And that is all good and it definitely helps. 
But as with most things, too much of a good thing can also become unhelpful. And this way of living can also lead to overthinking everything and kind of becoming a perfectionist with your own life, needing to have every aspect of your life be intentional all the time. And here is where doing instead of overthinking comes into play. And I've learned that you don't have to fully understand something before you begin it. You don't have to already be good at it and know all, everything about it before you can even start. And this was a lesson that I very much needed to learn because I never felt comfortable just starting something. I wanted to do my research, know all about it, uh, have a step-by-step -step plan before I could even start, which is a very good way to overcomplicate your life. The most important step that you can take is simply just the next one. You don't even have to see the bigger picture yet, just try something see how it goes, see how you like it, and see if you can make improvements along the way. That is how you learn and how you grow. So if you want to take better care of your health and you want to start exercising more, the complexity bias might tell you to do research and see if you should go to a spinning class or a hit class and which one will bring you the best results over time. But in the end, it is the simplest and often most effective way to just start exercising, do something that you like, and see from there. If you want to improve your health, a way that you could take action is simply to be mindful of what you're putting in your shopping basket next time you go grocery shopping. If you want a richer social life, just call your friend. If you feel like your schedule is very busy, focus on doing the most important thing first, and then just seeing how much time and energy you have left afterwards. The next thing you can stop doing is focusing on what your life looks like from the outside instead of on what it feels like from the inside. And this also means to stop ignoring your feelings. I think most of us know that we want to live a life that we enjoy, that we're proud of, that fits well with our personality and our lifestyle and what we find important. But when you really think about it, it's not always easy to know if we want these things because of our inner selves or because of how having a life like that would look from the outside, so how it is perceived by others. I think it is pretty normal in our society to focus on creating a life that mostly just looks great from the outside, just kind of ticking all the boxes of the things that we should do and the success that we should focus on. And this actually already starts in school when we're very young and we learn to kind of hide away how we truly feel about these things, sometimes even from ourselves, in order to have that life that takes all of the boxes of what we feel society wants us to do or our parents or our friends. Why we should learn to stop ignoring our feelings and instead tune into them is that they can help us to simplify our life by telling us what we want or need from life. And we can't always know these things before trying it out because what we think we like and enjoy is based on past experiences. So we've done certain things in the past, we've learned from them, we know, okay, I don't like this, I do like that. But there are also probably lots of things that you haven't tried yet, so you don't really know how you feel about them. And when we get better at not ignoring our feelings and living in a way that feels good to you, then it becomes easier to identify these things. This is also something that I talk about in my online Simplify Your Life course, which is a resource that I made that offers a lot of in-depth guidance and really helps you to make positive changes to your life. It comes with worksheets and audio files. You will get lifetime access to the materials and there is a weekly structure to the lessons, but you can also decide your own pace and have it fit your schedule. I'll leave the link to where you can get more info and sign up in the description box below. You can also get more info about what other people had to say, who took the course, um, frequently asked questions, all of that stuff. So again, feel free to check it out, link in the description. Holding on to what you wish was different and focus instead on making the most out of what you already have, out of your current circumstances, and focusing on gratitude instead of wishing your life away. I probably always say this, but <laughs> I just, I cannot not say this, that I realize it's easy for me to talk about gratitude because I've never had truly something really terrible happen to me in my life. Of course, I've had my challenges, small things like uh, getting fired from a job or I had to get a rather invasive health procedure done or even my burnout. Um, my mom was really sick a while ago, but she's fine now. I've never lost a partner. I've never not been able to afford housing or food. I basically have everything that I need. I'm healthy. My partner is healthy. 
So I feel like, yes, it is easy for me to talk about gratitude because I have so much to be grateful for. But I also know what it's like when people hold on to what they wish was different. I wish I had more money. I wish I could move. I wish I had a better job. I wish I could travel. Or maybe even I wish that that person didn't do this thing to me in the past, holding on to past grudges of people who have wronged you or maybe even things that you have done that you regret and you wish you hadn't. If we want to simplify our life, it really helps if we can start by accepting our current reality and living it fully instead of wishing things to be different because that kind of thinking gets us stuck. Whereas accepting reality and taking small steps towards the things that we enjoy can get us moving it can project us forward and also it can help us to really appreciate the many wonderful things that we already have going for us and this isn't always easy i still fall for this sometimes as well for example we have been wanting to move to another apartment for over two years now and it hasn't worked out for us yet i'm not gonna go into the whole thing because that would take way too long but when it comes down to it, we're not really happy with the neighborhood that we currently live in and we would love to move. And we've really been trying, but with the housing market being what it is, we haven't been able to find a solution that's doable for us yet. And sometimes I'll picture us in our new apartment and it has everything that I want, a nice cute little two bedroom apartment in a quiet neighborhood. And in my head, I'm already picking out wallpaper and decorating my home office and i don't think there's there's anything wrong with it with picturing what it could be like and maybe the universe will even lend you a hand if you do this and if you believe in affirmations and stuff but what i try to stay away from is the kind of thinking of like i wish we could move i wish we didn't live here i wish we could live in a better neighborhood or in a better building because that kind of thinking gets me stuck and it keeps me from enjoying and appreciating this wonderful apartment that i already have and be grateful for the fact that I even have a place to live. And that kind of thinking would overcomplicate my life and my mental space. And this is just an example, but we can use this on so many different things. So dealing with reality and taking small actions, small steps where we can, focusing on gratitude instead of just wishing for things to be different. And the last thing that I want to talk to you about today is also one of the most important and a very easy concept, I think, to grasp, which we've just learned is a good thing, <laughs> and that is to stop over committing yourself. The thing that always surprises me every time, and it really shouldn't because I've experienced it before, is the great sense of relief that I experience when something falls off my to-do list or a commitment falls through and I don't have to go somewhere or do something that I wasn't looking forward to just the sense of extra headspace and time and energy. I just love that feeling <laughs> and it always makes me sigh with relief. So I try not to overcomplicate my schedule in the first place by not over committing myself. And this doesn't always work out. Simplifying your life doesn't mean that from now on you will never be stressed or you'll never be too busy. Life has a way of throwing things at us all at once sometimes. And it still happens to me too sometimes that I'm way busier than I'd like to be. But overall, knocking one or two commitments or obligations from your schedule and just saying no to things that you really don't want to do has a huge impact on our schedule, both in the short term, but especially so in the long term. Try defining your non-negotiables when it comes to your schedule. How much time alone and how much downtime do you need? And then actively scheduling those things in and taking them just as seriously as you take the other things in your calendar, because in the end, you matter. Time for your reflection and rest and self-care matters. So by not over-scheduling yourself and over-committing yourself, you're creating breathing room. This also means trying to not make promises to other people that you already know you won't be able to keep or that you know that you will be dreading when the time comes. It's so easy to just say yes when someone asks you to do something with them or to watch their pet when they go on vacation or things like that. But when it comes down to it, if you already know that this is something that is either going to be very difficult for you or over schedule you 
or just going to be something that you really, really are not going to enjoy, it is better to just say no. It gives you one less complication to think about and it also gives the other person more time to figure out another solution. Wow, I feel like I talked a lot and this was probably a lot for you to take in and unpack. <laughs> But I'm really happy that I was able to talk to you about these things because they have been so important for me. And I know that these tips are a little more, you know, heavy maybe than just simply, you know, don't buy this, buy that. But in the end, they have been so helpful for me. So I am very curious to hear from you which of these five things resonated with you the most and if there's anything I've missed. So please leave that in the comment section. Also, a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my work. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is another platform where I also post videos and content and you can join for $5 a month. And with that, you can help support my work, support this channel and help me keep making these videos. I'll share different vlogs, but also more content related to minimalism, simple living, all of these things. We also have a monthly tea time chat and more. If you join, you will immediately get access to over 50 videos that are already up. And it's also just a really wonderful and positive community. So if you want to join too, then you can do that at patreon.com slash simple happy zen. And if you have any questions about it, then feel free to leave them in the comments. Whew, so I'm going to take an ice bath or something because this heat is killing me. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this video, you will also love this one where I share tips for making slow living very simple and easy. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again next week. Bye bye.